Stale. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. I am particularly enjoyed that renowned statement. Uh, that's uh, heartwarming. Uh, I'm going to depart from my usual process. This is the very first time I do not have a slide deck and this is all done interactively. That's the first disclaimer. And the second one is that I'm going to show about eight applications written in fourth, none of which are original to me. So these are all done by other people. Um, most of them I regard as rather heroic. That is, whoever's done it has, has really mastered some particular niche in computer science and graphics in Windows and computer interfacing, something of that sort. So um, with that ado, we'll go to the share screen. If I can find the right screen to show. All right, this, you're looking at my screen. You can see the clutter of my brain from all the applications. And uh, we'll start off with the first one, which is a um, written in fourth. Oh, we don't see anything. Oh, okay. Yes, I see that you're trying to share, but I don't see the screen. Okay, we'll make another stab at it here. Uh, a little hard to know which one of these screens is the actual live window. Now I see a desktop. Okay, now now do we have the uh, a cluttered uh, home screen? That's your desktop, Bill. Good, that's what we want. Do do do. Get that out of here. Okay, do we see? All right, we'll pass up on that one. All right, we in this case, some of these are, are pre compiled as exe files, and some of them are uh, four files. So, this is a, a graphic demonstration, and it's uh, Pretty straightforward. It is just a, uh, a educational demonstration on doing graphics plotting. And um, unfortunately, most of these applications have very limited documentation. So you really have to read the source code. And even within the source code, a lot of it is a mystery because the uh, authors, 
I think the authors have written and rewritten the application so many times that they got tired of looking at comments. And so they've sort of faded away. So this is a, a very basic uh, educational one on doing graphics. I'll take the next one, which is a, a game. And this is quite a clever game, uh, Scolipion. It, uh, the goal is to generate uh, four or five dots in a row. And when you generate five dots in a row, you get a line. And the goal is, uh, as a solitary game, to make as, as many lines as possible. So for example, here's a, here's a square that makes a line. This makes a line. This makes a line. This makes a line and so on. So you count up uh, your score as how many lines have you made in the game. And notice it's fully graphic. Uh, the game knows that illegal squares where my cursor is right now is uh, not a valid move. So there's no action. And there's no action there. Uh, there's another, another one that is valid and so on. So it's... Um, uh, interactively, uh, it's very interactive, very clever, uh, great for a solo game. Now I hope I can hope I can close it without breaking anything. There we go. Uh, next game. This is Sudoku. Might you write down the name of the games uh, in the chat? Yes. Here's a Sudoku game. The purpose here is to, uh, you some familiar with it, there are nine small squares and one large square. And the idea is to place numbers in the squares so that there is no repetition within the small nine cell square and no repetition by row and by column. So I will attempt to make a few placements on here. Let's go to the number eight. I select the number eight, and then I'll place it here. And that's a valid move. Eight works there. But if I went to this row and try to place an eight, it comes out in red, which says, no, that's not a legal move. But if I put my eight there, it's legal. Now I'll attempt to find another place where eight will work. It will work there. And so one eight will work there. And uh, there is uh, a command to complete the game. If you uh, get partway done and get a little bored or a little tired or whatever, uh, let's see if we can find the command. Do, do, do. See solution. All right. I will now go down and click a solution. And so the game automatically then within the constraints that presently set up, uh, it will play to, to, uh, to conclusion. Control S. And it's not doing it. All right. We will, when it we will. does do it, is it instant or does it take a while? It's in, it's it's instant because it's so fast. It, uh, this is play, you know when a computer now with a twenty gigabyte uh, a two gigabyte clock rate, uh, things happen almost instantaneously. So uh, there is a chess program that runs, and the chess program does take some thinking time because it 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 uh, it will play four, five, six moves uh, in depth. But in this uh, Sudoku, uh, the response is instantaneous. And uh, are your eight, 
Are your eights perhaps blocking the correct solution? Say that again. Are your your placed eights um, maybe blocking the correct solutions? I, I still, you're going to echo in there, and I didn't understand that very well. So maybe give me one more try to see if I can catch what you said. There's a, an echo on, on this. All right. So you've placed some eights in your game, right? Yes. Are those blocking the correct solution? Say that last phrase again. Are there which kind of solutions blocking core? Correct. I don't understand. Okay. Right. Say, right. say it in different words. <laughs> if you try deleting the eights, will it start working? Oh, now that's a point. Uh, that's a good point. Because yeah, it can't complete an illegal game. Now we'll try that. No, the control S still doesn't is not happy. Uh, C solution. Nope. Um, I tried it early this morning and it worked. So who knows why? Anyway, that that is that we don't see the full solution. Ah. All right, next one. Uh, this is a simple graphics uh, demonstration. Shows you, um, it's a, a essentially a prototype. You can do squares, lines, ovals, shapes, shading, cross hatching, and so on. And so if you are interested in doing any one of these applications, you can pull that little prototype out and use it uh, as your uh, starting point. All right, next uh, demonstration. This is um, random uh, figures. We can do it a little bit slower. But it shows you number one the speed. Look at the at the rate at which it's generating pixels. I mean, it's generating in maybe 10, 10 milliseconds per figure that's being generated. Uh, really quite amazing. Uh, this is a. A clever one too. It's a calculator. Oh, pardon me. It's a, a calendar. The calendar uh, centered on today. So do you see the today square, uh, September twenty third, and you can move forward in time. And uh, there's a way to generate to move by year. So um, again, a, you know, it's a it's a live. Oh, here we go. Here's how now we're moving by year. There's a little matrix on year. So again, another very neat application. This one was particularly interesting and challenging to me. Uh, this is a demonstration of the multitasking. Uh, in uh, Win32 Fourth, there is no inherent use of multitasking, but the hooks are there. And since it is so poorly documented, uh, it was a mystery to me on how you activate it. But by looking at this demonstration, we get to see uh, the actual, the actual uh, process there are two demonstrations done in multitasking. Uh, one of them generates 16 tasks, and they simply do counting, and they count to a limit and then terminate. So you see 16 tasks being originated, 
operate and then close automatically. The second demonstration is has two tasks. And the two tasks are simply displaying lines from a file, but it's alternating, showing you how the tasks alternate back and forth and uh, are generating uh, what appear to be random lines, but they're sequential lines out of a file. So there is the um, tasks running. And you can see the exiting part is the ones that have reached the limit of 999 uh, have closed. And we finally get down to the point where all the tasks have run to completion. And now we're all completed. And we're back to uh, 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 the console. We'll go to demo two. Now, demo two is just displaying from um, a, a file. They're actually displaying the source code of the multi-task demonstration itself. You can see on the left-hand edge uh, by the task identity, a uh, task ID number. One task has an ID number of three nine two zero. The other one has uh, two four four one two. And so as each task activates, it displays its one line of text and it releases to the next. Incidentally, a lot of the force, uh, there have been uh, two styles of, of um, multitasking. One is cooperative in which at uh, critical points in your code, you release one task to operate the next. So whenever you're in a loop, you always want to do a pause, which will release the multitasker to the next task. Uh, this uses the uh, multitasking of Windows. So it is uh, 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 not, it's not cooperative, it's uh, interrupt driven. There's another, another phrase for that, but it's uh, preemptive. Pre it's pre uh, preempt preemptive multitasking. So, uh, Again, because of the speed of uh, Win32 fourth, it's really quite amazing on the, um, you know, the performance level avail available for multitasking. I've always called it uncooperative, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, here is a picture viewer. Let's see if we can get that to picture viewer to run. Hot do do. This is not uh, this, this is not opening happily. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, it's uh, huh? It should be running automatically. We'll see if we come back to that. This is a very simple one, which is just displaying the ability to pull up fonts. And we see uh, uh, Wingdings font and another one have been uh, uh, pulled up and displayed. So this is again a demonstration on how to uh, you know, access fonts for your own use. Let's uh, try, um, uh, and uh, the, here is the help system, 
which is actually written, the, the help system for, for fourth is written in fourth. And uh, it is really quite elaborate. Uh, I'm quite amazed on this. This is all pulling up uh, uh, file information that's, uh, that's up on board. And so we're now navigating through the, um, the fourth help system, all written in fourth. And including the uh, ANS fourth standards. So here's the word index of the ANS fourth standard. So if you want to look up uh, using the help system, the definition of a word, for example, like span, this will bring up uh, the uh, in the internals of the Win32 of the uh, ANS standard. So um, quite impressive to me. And notice the multiple windows, the ruling, uh, the indenting, the um, file browser, all there. Uh, here is a, um, to me, it's a good news, bad news program. Uh, this is chess. This is chess written in fourth. It's done graphically and uh, with ASCII. We're looking right now at the ASCII version. So if you see in the bottom right, uh, bottom left corner, there is a graphics uh, image of the chessboard. The white players are capital letters, and the black players are in the lowercase letters. And we can either enter moves or we can ask the computer to make a move. When the computer moves, there is a uh, an opening book that's included that goes about about eight or twelve moves deep. So for the chess fanciers, uh, the the book is identified, and uh, their classic book moves identified by their originator. And so if I have a little bit of luck here, we'll actually just play the game automatically by typing go. And there's the first move. So the king's pawn from two to king pawn four. The response then is uh, black moves the king's pawn two to king pawn four. And so now we see move by move. And so on. So there's the game playing. There is a uh, command uh, which will play to uh, uh, completion. And I'm not sure if I know. Let's see if we can do FCP. Now, the uh, move to completion, I don't see on the list here. The, the, the good news, bad news part of this is that uh, there is a graphics version of this. And the graphics version is spectacular. However, due to evolution of Windows, it only plays on some of my computers and not others. And I keep getting a, you know, a graphics mode not available error. Uh, also, within Win32 Fourth, there are about six or so other demonstrations, which, um, due to time of operating system changes, methods, styles, whatever, are not fully functional. And so, there's a good um, opportunity for anybody to take one of these applications and uh, really improve on it and get it to work. Let me try one last chance to see if we can get that um, picture viewer to work. Uh, 
Oh, maybe it is working. Oh, the picture viewer is working. All right. Um, there's one of the most impressive pictures that we have available. Well, we all know who it is. And here's a demonstration of the use of the picture viewer, some of the options on it. This is uh, John Scarney, who's a magician. I've done a biography of him that's available on Amazon uh, called John Scarney, More Than Magic. Uh, the the uh, copies are just tumbling off the shelf from Amazon. But this is a, a, a modest picture viewer editor. We'll show you some of the operations it can do. It can uh, reorient the picture. We can flip, 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 flip. And so on there, you can uh, expand, you can compress and so on. Uh, it doesn't do any actual editing. It's uh, strictly is uh, doing viewing. So what we've seen is an example here of about eight or nine different demonstrations. Some of graphics, uh, some are informational, like the help system. Uh, uh, the sound is available. I remember on the video uh, uh, viewer, we had uh, sound supported. One of the applications I hated to see uh, fail is there is one to play uh, uh, online radio stations. There's quite a large number of online radio stations available. And this application was written using one that was in, done in England back in the 1980s and 90s. Uh, but that station has gone off the air or off the internet. And so the, the app no longer works. But, uh, and I tried to make some quick uh, patches in it to see if I could link to current radio stations. But, uh, it took a little more effort than I was willing to commit, but that's a, a beautiful application because with it on your desktop, you could be playing a, a radio station to music stations in the background as you, as you program, all done by fourth. So that concludes my demonstration. We'll go back to uh, full screen. And are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll now turn back to Kevin. Thanks very much for your rapt attention. Yay, here we go. I'm having uh, technical difficulties here too. Bill, I see uh, your book is, uh, is available on Amazon. It's 25 bucks, it looks interesting. Uh, next time I buy a batch, I'll have to, to put that in the queue. Uh, there's a high-quality scan available from the funny store. Do you get uh, actual uh, residuals for that, or is that just a, a bootleg? Uh, um, that's bootleg. That's, that's, what, let's see. Uh, what's it called? A funny store? What's the term? F-U-N-N-Y-S-T-O-R-E dot net. I'll have to check that out because that's bootleg. Uh, uh, and that had to have been a scan because of the uh, uh, Amazon has a, a, no, a PDF original, but it has not been released in other forms. I do have a, a actually a close friend, a magician close friend who publishes eBooks heavily on magicians. And so we've cut a deal where he's going to put it out as an eBook uh, in an authorized form. So um, he's made quite a career of going around to either in print or out of print uh, magic books. Uh, in the hobby world, if you look in, in the uh, hobby community, magic books are the highest number of books per category because the magicians, I think, have a lot of downtime when they're not performing, so they write books instead. So there are more books about magic than any other hobby activity, including all sports and so on. Um, they go back to 1780 or 90 
um, on a book called Discovery Witchcraft. And so there's a 200 year history of magic books. Anyway, this uh, um, uh, friend anyway is going to put put my book out on uh, as a as an ebook. Uh, but I'll check I'll check out this bootleggers at uh, Funny Store and see what what they're doing. As we know these days, there's little control you can have uh, once once it's out on the net. That's the way it goes. Yeah, there's a signed copy at A Books. Should you desire to have it. Well, that's there. one that that's one that I have, I have sold and it went to somebody because all the copies I put out are signed, and uh, so that's a resell. Somebody bought it and now they're going to resell it. Uh, and more than retail. Yeah. <laughs> you know, John Draper uh, wrote a book uh, on called Beyond the Little Blue Box, and uh, those copies are signed, and. I actually act as his agent selling them online. Oh, I, we sell them on uh, on eBay and sell them on Amazon. The proceeds all go to John Draper 100%. But typically, we'll sell one on eBay. And then about a month later, somebody will, will post it back on eBay. So they read it, and then they resell it. So as a published author, you're always competing against your own uh, copies that are floating out um, used. But I love books, and I protect the, the paper copies. So the more people can get paper copies, the better things are. Well, when you buy a book, you buy the right to sell that copy to somebody else when you're done with it. But uh, I was wondering about the source code or the executables for the demos today. Uh, would you send a, a list of, of where you would go to get that stuff, or do you have to get it from Bill Ragsdale? No, no, these are all on Win32 Fourth, and they're on GitHub. So if you just do Win32 Fourth GitHub, uh, you download Win32 Fourth. It's uh, eight megabytes of source, and only about one and a half megabytes is the fourth itself. The remaining about six and a half megabytes are all applications and includes, of course, its own meta compiler, assembler. Uh, the assembler can operate either prefix or postfix. And then there's this huge variety of, of yep, you know, there's, uh, I didn't demonstrate it, but uh, uh, SQL, there's SQL Lite, SQL Lite. Uh, there are two implementations of that. Uh, with some reasonably good demonstrations. Uh, there's a lot of stuff buried in there. I mean, resources you would never find any other way. How can you, where where else in the world will you find an internet radio implementation, implementation written in fourth? That's, that's, the, that's, it's a gold mine. So go to GitHub and let's do a search on Win32 Fourth. It's it's I don't control the, the uh, that. It's done by the control is done or the updates are done by a group in uh, in Germany. So when you download Win32 Fourth, you get all this stuff, or are they separate entities on GitHub? No, nope, you get it all. You do it. when you load when you when you load that. Uh, the amazing thing is that when you load that application, it's an EXE file. It it opens a fourth nucleus and then gives you some install options. And so you typically just say install full system and then it meta compiles the entire system. So you get a brand new virginal system meta compiled to fit your computer, uh, including the source. And then from then on, when you run it, every time you run it, you're running the new meta compile system you have. If you revise your system, if you go into the source code and revise the source code, then you can rerun the install and it will reinstall it using your modifications. So you're able to uh, make your own changes in the system. Uh, it's a uh, full, full package industrial strength. It will also do turnkey applications. So by appending about six lines at the end of any code, that code will then be compiled into an EXE file and then run standalone. About half of the demonstrations I showed were standalone applications. And on some of them, I uh, it automatically loaded into the IDE and then I had to compile them. 
So speaking of books and speaking of Win 32 Fourth, when will the long-awaited pre-publication availability of your uh, upcoming book be announced? <laughs> yes, I, I smile out of frustration. Um, my goal was to do a chapter a week. Uh, currently, it's 350 pages. We've got, there's 27 chapters and and seven appendices uh it's um uh as so many computer programs it's always 80 percent complete so it's 80 percent complete and it continues 80 percent complete because i keep adding things to it but uh with one one chapter a week it's 27 weeks out so the best we can hope for is next spring and um I'm I'm struggling to maintain that one chapter a week because what it means is one chapter clean. Now the chapters are all written. There's 27 chapters of written material, and but to make them readable, clean, examples, um, there are examples, and then it's written in a textbook format. So there are, are problems for the uh, user to uh, complete, and so we have a also it's a complete survey. It covers every aspect of fourth. Uh, including the virtual machine, but it does not cover meta compilation and does not cover graphics because those two are would justify their own books. So from a user standpoint and a modifier standpoint, it's complete. Educational is complete, but uh, I don't have the can't afford the depth to go into meta compiling or into graphics. The graphics is done in um, object oriented programming, and that's a separate world in itself. And when it's released, it's going to be released to the public in full form. So it'll be available on Amazon in print form, but the uh, PDF will be available and freely distributable. So if somebody wants it online, they can get it, they'll be able to get a PDF, have it. And uh, um, there'll be no restrictions. It's not public domain, but it'll be on one of the um, uh, GPL uh, formats, so that you can you can use it, you can download it, you can have your own online PDF copy, but just don't sell it. But people will. On the other hand, it'll be on Amazon, and you get the print copy too. Speaking of the print copy, will that be a press run or is it print to order from Amazon? No, be, no, no only print to order because a print run means it's got to be my money up front. And um, um, you got to try to figure out what the print run would be. But it would be print to order. The only lack on print to order is there's about a two-week lag to get it. So um, it would be the same price. Um, I'm guessing... Based on the page count, uh, maybe forty-five dollars, maybe fifty dollars. Um, Amazon charges about a, a cent and a half a page, and so basically, it just is how many pages are in the book, cent and a half a page. And on the other hand, you can't go to a Xerox store and Xerox for a cent and a half a page. So uh, it's be black and white, unfortunately. My Scarney book is in full color. But again, that adds significantly to the cost if you uh, go full color. And uh, I only have in the book a, a, a moderate number of description, a moderate number, a modest number of illustrations that are in color. So it'd be black and white. So wait for it. Uh, I'm work on it almost every day, but it's uh, making it look pretty. And then, of course, what happens, I keep discovering. And the minute I do start documenting one little fragment, I look back at the source code and I find a whole new element that I wasn't aware of and bring it in. Uh, there's stuff in there you wouldn't believe. Uh, execution chains, link lists, uh, the uh, uh, object-oriented programming, database. Anyway, enough on that. Uh, back to you, uh, Kevin. All right. Well, thank you, Bill. Uh, any other questions for Bill? I'm sorry, I sort of elbowed in there. 